Are you running your online business but really struggling to keep track of time and be productive and just honestly get shit done and get shit organized? Stick around because in this video, I'm gonna walk you through eight online business productivity hacks for coaches and service providers. Hey everybody, welcome back. I am your host, Jennifer Morella. This YouTube channel is for content creators, coaches, and service providers who are looking to grow using social media. If that is right up your alley, then do me a favor and click that subscribe button. Go ahead and give me a thumbs up if you're excited to learn all the productivity hacks I'm gonna share with you today that I use on a daily basis that basically take my business to the next level pretty much save me about 50 minutes a day in my business just by using these eight productivity hacks. So if you're ready, give me a thumbs up and let's dive in. <laughs> so the first step is automation. Now, when I'm referring to automation, I'm referring to two things. I'm referring to automating your systems and your processes, and I'm referring to automating a process that you don't necessarily need to do. So for example, when I'm referring to SOPs, standard operating procedures, I'm referring to the way you do things in your business. For example, let's say you have a new client and you're getting them from booking a call with you to sending a proposal to then sending an invoice, then a contract, and then getting their first call with you or whatever, right? That whole process doesn't necessarily need to be done by you, but it needs to be done in order for your business to flow, right? So creating a standard operating procedure, basically keeping track of what that looks like so that when somebody else can take that over, when you hire someone, which we'll talk about in just a second. Um, the ways that you can keep track of that, I use a software called Loom. I can check it out right here. It is super easy. It basically records your screen. And what I do is I record the process and speak it out loud. And then I save it in my ClickUp, which I'll talk about in just a second, which is a project management website that I will then pass on to the next person that I hire who is going to do that task for me, right? Now, the second part of automation that I'm referring to is automating your systems for your products. So for a perfect example, that is a sales funnel. How do you get somebody to follow you DM you, buy from you, and then continuously buy from you, that entire streamlined process, like how do you automate that process, right? And go through that entire system. And when you can do that, then that's when you're looking at scaling a business. If you cannot automate a system, if you cannot automate a process or a lesson or a method that you've learned, then you cannot scale. Easy as that. This leads us to number two. Number two is my favorite and the most basic. Organize your calendar. <laughs> And I say that and I laugh because people are like, what do you mean? It, chances are, if you're watching this YouTube video, you are probably the kind of person who does everything in your business every single day, seven days a week. And chances are you're really close to burning out if you haven't already, or you understand that that is not sustainable, right? So when I say organize your calendar, what I mean is give a day of the week a theme. So Mondays, for example, in my business are team days. Tuesdays and Wednesdays are client days and Thursdays and Fridays are content creation and sales. So that looks like Monday when I was referring to team, that means that I'm in meetings with my team, I'm touching base with my team members, making sure that goals are reached for the week, anything I need to answer in Slack, any emails, anything like that that is team or business related happens on Monday, right? And then Tuesdays and Wednesdays when I'm referring to coaching, I mean, sorry, clients, I'm referring to my clients that need help, whether it's looking over a sales page, getting on a one-on-one -on -one call, having a group call, whatever it is that I have in my business going on, it is, those two days are definitely happening for my clients or dedicated to my clients. Now, that's not to say that on Monday, I'm not looking at my client work. On the contrary, I am. There's two things that I do in my business every morning, no matter what. The first one is email, and the second part is Slack. So not only do I have team management on Slack, which I will talk about Slack in just a second, but I also have run my programs through Slack. So a lot of my clients are in communication with me via Slack. So I'm having conversations with via Slack and I do it twice on Mondays. So I check my emails in the morning with Slack and then at the evening before I close out for the day, I check the email in Slack as well. But really systemizing and finding a theme for the day in your calendar has been the ultimate game changer. Because I found myself, and maybe you feel like this, let me know in the comments below, where you're taking a thousand calls a day and you're not getting the actual work done that you need to get done to move the needle in your business. So organizing your calendar, which allows you to organize your time. Also, if it's not on my calendar, it doesn't happen, unfortunately. That's just the way it rolls, right? Okay, so this leads us to number three. Remember I said to you that you potentially want to create SOPs so that when you hire someone, they can eventually do that job because you don't necessarily need to do it, but obviously needs to get done. Well, number three is all about outsourcing. 
<laughs> and you're probably like, but Jen, I can barely afford to pay myself. How am I going to pay somebody else? That's okay. There's so many ways that you can find somebody. You can find an intern. You can pay somebody from another country to do, you know, minimal basic work. However, not a fan of that. But anyways, I digress. My point is outsourcing the work that you don't have time to do and that you're not very good at, but you know needs to get done. A perfect example of that is like outsourcing your bookkeeping, outsourcing your accounting, right? Like, you know you can teach yourself, you know you can do your bookkeeping, but are you really gonna do it as good as someone who knows how to do bookkeeping, right? Another really good example is graphic design. I used to spend graphic design hours in Canva doing stuff and it was stopping me from making money in my business and moving the needle because it was spending more time doing that when I could be spending stuff getting more clients, being in the DMs, creating more content, right? So I outsourced a graphic designer. And so I want you to think outside of the box. And if you're in that stage where you're like, I'm doing everything in my business, remember Rome wasn't built by one person, it was built by a thousand people, right? And it takes a community to build a community, right? So what I want you to do is make a list of all the things you do in your business and highlight the things that only make you money. Everything else on that list can possibly be outsourced. So this brings us to number four. So number four, I've mentioned it quite a few times already. This is a non-negotiable in your business. Like you need to have one of these platforms. My favorite is ClickUp. So I'm talking about a project management tool. Asana, ClickUp, Trello, those are just a few. Monday.com. Um, some of those you do have to pay for, so it does get a little pricey. However, um, ClickUp to me is my favorite and my best. My favorite free option is Asana. These tools change the game. And so it's a project management to keep track of your processes and everything that goes on in your business so that it's not all here or on your post-its, like I used to, or a planner is actually in a software that has timers and deadlines and that you can share with other people that you potentially hire. But having a project management tool is a no brainer and I highly, highly recommend it. Again, ClickUp is my favorite but there are a ton of them that you can use. Okay, this leads me to number five because we're all about organization over here, Google Suites. So Google Suites, having your own Google Drive and organizing your Google Drive, that has been the biggest game changer. When I first started my business and I was doing everything alone, I wish I had done this from the very beginning because when I started to hire people, I actually went back and started to do it. And I was like, oh my goodness, what a disaster, you guys. When I'm referring to having a Google suite, I'm referring to having Google Drive and have everything organized. So I would start off by creating a file for marketing, a file for sales, a file for branding, a file for accounting, um, client courses, one-on-one, -on -one, all of that, break everything down and then break it down into the correct folder. Now, if you're just starting out and you're like, Jen, I don't have clients, like I don't have any sales, like. These are the pillars in your business that you need to have. So just throw them in there and eventually you'll be able to fill those folders. But having a Google suite that potentially when you outsource that person could utilize and have all the tools there is great. I also really love Google suite for my photos. So I have brand photos and I have photos that I keep in folders on my computer. And instead of keeping it on my computer, I have it in the Google drive that everyone has access to. So when content needs to be distributed, it's like, super easy to be able to access that without having to bother me for it. So that's just a quick win for you there. Okay, this leads us to number six. Earlier I said communication is key, right? And I mentioned a platform called Slack. Slack is my ultimate favorite. So I utilize Slack to communicate amongst my team members, but also with my clients. But I first utilize Slack with my team members. And now I highly recommend that even if you don't have somebody and it's just you, using Slack is great because you can also make notes and then remind yourself later for Slack. So there are things that you don't forget that need to get done. But for communication, I highly recommend Slack. There are other platforms like Boxer, um, WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, Facebook community groups, all of those. Um, but I'm a big fan of taking people away from social media. I find that it has more value. And the good thing about Slack is that not only could you use it on your desktop, but you can also use it on your mobile device. So this brings us to number seven. So we've covered quite a few things at this point, right? We have our processes. You know that in order to scale, you have to automate. Then we talked about organizing your calendar. Then we talked about outsourcing. Then we talked about the tools to organize outsourcing like project management, AKA ClickUp, my favorite. 
click up should sponsor me. <laughs> and then we talked about communication and we talked about organization within your system. My last two that I have for you are also just as important, but number seven covers sales, covers content. So how do you take away from spending so much time posting you schedule it, right? I have a ton of videos in my channel where I talk about batching your content and the importance of batching content. And while I understand that life happens and sometimes it gets difficult, like God knows that I am no angel at batching content, but I try to do it as often as possible simply because it helps my team organize my content and that's when things begin to happen. So my biggest recommendation is scheduling content and the platform that I use is later.com. There's another platform called Planoly. I've used it before, but I'm not the biggest fan. I really, really like Later because of the analytics and how accurate it is um, and it just becomes really easy to use so I highly highly recommend later.com okay and now last but not least this leads us to number eight we've talked about all the things organization marketing sales now what's a tool you can utilize to collect the dinero of the money <laughs> my favorite is stripe I am a huge fan of Stripe and I like Stripe for several reasons. Number one, you can keep track of what's coming in and all of that stuff and you get to keep track of the subscriptions, but also you get to send out invoices and they're super easy to send out. So I highly recommend checking out Stripe for your business. It's You can make a one-off invoice, you can make a subscription invoice so that the person, once they put in the details, their credit card details, it will consistently um, run the transaction based on the date that they put in their credit card details. But I highly, highly recommend Stripe and putting that into your systems. It will change the game and obviously automate the process when you have a reoccurring client, client that needs to get billed often, Stripe actually creates the email and sends it out to them when you set it up for your business and your client. So bam, there you have it. You have all of my eight productivity hacks for online service providers and coaches to scale your online business. Now, if you found these super helpful, let me know in the comments below. If you have other options that you highly recommend, share in the comments below, because I'm always open to that. But again, I hope this was super helpful and I hope you enjoyed this. Hope you hit that subscribe button and I see you around. And if you did like this, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. It really helps with the algorithm and I appreciate you guys so much. But I will see you guys around very soon. I drop my videos every Monday and Friday and I'll see you guys soon. Take care, bye.